Hi everybody, it's Katrina. From rare bony fish that get enormous to sharks grabbing people off boats, here are 10 frightening encounters with sea monsters. Number 10. Great White Attacks Swimmer in Maine A New York City resident swimming off the Maine coast in late July of this year became the first recorded victim of a fatal shark attack in the state. 63-year-old Julie D'Imperio Hollowatch was visiting her Harpswell area property from the Big Apple when she and her daughter decided to go for a swim. Tragedy struck just 60 feet off Bailey Island around 3.20 p.m. on Monday, July 27th, when a shark attacked Ms. Hollowatch. The U.S. Coast Guard reportedly responded to the incident but did not get there in time to save her life. Kayakers also rushed to the scene, but unable to save Hollowatch, they brought the woman's body back to shore. EMS responders pronounced her dead at the scene, according to officials, who are unsure what triggered the attack. One possibility is that the woman's dark wetsuit resembled a seal, according to Maine Department of Marine Resources Commissioner Patrick Kelleher, who spoke at a press briefing adding that the kayaker's ability to reach her remains and transport them to shore was nothing more than miraculous. The Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries positively identified Hollowatch's attacker as a great white based on a tooth fragment connected with the scene. Prior to Hollowatch's death, Maine only had one reported shark attack, which occurred in 2010, leaving the victim uninjured, making this tragedy an especially rare and unusual event. For this reason, officials decided against closing the beach, despite increasing signs of white sharks being in the area, including seals with bite marks and one dead seal. Number 9. Giant Oarfish Nicknamed messengers of the sea, giant oarfish are almost always observed dead after washing ashore and are thought to be the inspiration for numerous sea serpent legends. I mean, just look at it! As the world's longest bony fish, these giants grow up to 56 feet long and weigh as much as 600 pounds, according to National Geographic, and they have a bizarre tendency to beach themselves, making it a rare treat to observe one in its natural habitat, in a non-distressed state. While filming for the TV show River Monsters just a few years ago, host Jeremy Wade spotted a giant oarfish 80 feet underwater in the Mediterranean Sea. Wade was understandably thrilled, as the exceptional rarity of encounters between humans and giant oarfish means we know very little about these creatures. They are very unusual looking fish, Wade reported. One of the things said about them is that they are the longest fish that isn't a shark. They are quite ribbon-like in shape, they're long and very thin-bodied. They are so rare that many experienced divers and biologists have said that you can spend a whole lifetime in the water and never see an oarfish. Wade cited the enviable encounter, which many scientists would undoubtedly love to experience for themselves, as one of his most memorable moments. And now for number 8, but first, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back! And if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us! We'd love to have you! Number 8. Lake Erie Monster also known as the South Bay Bessie, the Lake Erie monster was first spotted in 1793, and sightings continued into recent times, with a noticeable uptick over the last 30 or so years. Bessie is reportedly a grayish, snake-like creature measuring 30 to 40 feet long, and a foot or more in diameter. The first observation of Bessie occurred north of Sandusky, Ohio, when the captain of the sloop Felicity noticed the alleged monster while shooting at ducks. There were three reported sightings throughout 1817, including one off the Toledo, Ohio coast, in which the witnesses, two French brothers by the name of Dussault, described the creature as a sturgeon with arms. The 20 to 30 foot serpent was writhing in what the pair perceived as death throes. Then, in July 1892, the entire crew of a Toledo bound ship from Buffalo noticed churning waters about a half mile ahead. Upon closer examination, they observed a huge sea serpent, apparently wrestling about in the waters as if fighting with an unseen foe. Following the last reported sighting of Bessie in 1993, a local marina owner named Thomas Solberg offered a $5,000 reward to anyone who captured the monster alive. While nobody has ever caught the beast, Bessie's legend lives on through the Cleveland Monsters hockey team, as well as a Great Lakes Brewing Company IPA named in its honor. Number 7. Strettlefish you may be surprised to learn that some human encounters with sea monsters are not necessarily by chance, or even by seeking them out in the wild, but instead are created in the lab. 
In a recently published paper in the journal Genes, Hungarian scientists described the accidental creation of a new fish species, dubbed the strudelfish. The strudelfish emerged as a result of scientists' attempts to revive the Russian sturgeon population via a method of reproduction called gynogenesis, which involves procreating asexually in a way where sperm is required, but offspring carry 100% maternal DNA. To generate gynogenesis within the Russian sturgeon, the research team used sperm from the American paddlefish. What they didn't realize is that the genetic material from both parents would combine to form an entirely new species. Why are they doing all of this in the first place? They want more caviar. Even more strangely, while some of the offspring appear to carry a 50-50 genetic split, others more strongly resemble one or the other parent species. One of the few things all the offspring seem to have in common is that they are all carnivores, like sturgeons, as opposed to paddlefish who feed on zooplankton. The strudelfish will likely disappear from existence just as quickly as it emerged, as the scientists have no plans to continue breeding it. We never wanted to play around with hybridization, senior researcher Attila Mozart told the New York Times. It was absolutely unintentional. Whoops! Number 6. Great White Attacks Boy In July of this year, a great white shark measuring over 11 and a half feet long grabbed a 10-year-old boy named Lucas Arnott from a fishing boat off the coast of northwest Tasmania. The little boy was standing on the side of the boat when the shark came seemingly out of nowhere and yanked him into the water. A shark, unprovoked and undetected before the attack, jumped out of the water, pulling him over the side of the boat into the water, a statement from the family read. Lucas's father, John Arnott, sprang into action, readily jumping into the water to save his son and scare the shark away. Thankfully, the plan worked, and Lucas survived. Following the attack, Lucas received first aid from bystanders who flocked to assist in his rescue. Then he spent several days in the hospital, undergoing surgeries for cuts and injuries, but he could have been much worse. While his father's bravery certainly played an imperative role in Lucas's survival, so did the fact that he wore a life vest, reminding us of the importance of wearing proper safety equipment while out on the water. You think it will save you from drowning, but it looks like it will also help save you from shark bites. Number 5. Lake Ontario Sea Serpent While experts outright dismiss the possibility of a prehistoric monster lurking in the depths of Lake Ontario, legends of such a creature have proliferated for centuries, especially on the U.S. side of the lake bordering upstate New York. A first-hand eyewitness account of some boatmen from 1821, reported by the Oswego Palladium, describes a snake-like serpent roughly 20 to 25 feet long, which at first glance appeared motionless or asleep, resembling a burnt log. As the boatman advanced toward the animal, it raised its head about 10 feet out of the water, looking around him in the most awful and ferocious manner, and darting forward with great velocity, making the water fly in every direction, and throwing columns of it at a vertical height of 7 to 8 feet with his tail. Another account from the Oswego Palladium, reported in 1833, estimates the monster's length at an astounding 175 feet. Like the previous report, the witnesses described seeing an apparently motionless being at first. Then the creature charged toward the vessel, narrowly missing it as it passed underneath the stern. In 1849, the British Whig reported the sighting of a miniature sea serpent, measuring roughly 12 feet long, with its body raised several feet out of the water. The creature allegedly fled past the vessel as the crew watched. As I said before, not everyone believes these fantastical tales, including government officials. Current DEC Lake Ontario fisheries staff are unaware of any accounts of Lake Ontario or St. Lawrence River sea monsters, an official from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation told the Palladium Times earlier this year. Any reports of abnormally large aquatic organisms resembling sea monsters are likely embellished accounts of large lake sturgeon. What do you think? Is the Lake Ontario sea serpent a real being or merely the product of over-imaginative sailors? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Bermuda Triangle Monster Researchers and armchair explorers alike have been trying to solve the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle and its bizarre disappearances for decades, and every now and then a news headline appears, claiming that the region's unanswered questions may finally be solved. In 2019, numerous news articles made such claims based on the discovery of a 30-foot-long creature that was discovered lurking off the coast of Tokyo. 
far removed from the Bermuda Triangle region. Marine biologists Tsunami Kubodera and Kaiochi Mori first spotted the so-called monster, which was actually a giant squid in 2005, and snapped pictures as it aggressively attacked bait lines near the Bonin Islands. In a connection many people are likely still trying to understand, the creature appeared in a 2007 Amazon Prime documentary entitled Inside the Bermuda Triangle. Researchers from Japan's National Science Museum identified the creature as Architeuthis, a rare species that seizes upon bait with extreme force and violence. The discovery somehow led Bermuda researcher Rob Simone to theorize that a similar creature may dwell within the Bermuda Triangle and that it could possibly explain past ship disappearances within the region. Meanwhile, octopus expert Dr. Jeff Marliave disputed Simone's theory, noting that any octopus species within the Bermuda Triangle would likely be very small and far from capable of capsizing a ship. But an octopus is not a squid. What do you think? Is this an example of pseudoscience? In other words, of people making connections where none exist, or could it have been a giant squid this whole time? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Mysterious Tube Creature A 21-year-old diver named Ben Laurie was exploring near Cape Brett off New Zealand's North Island in early 2019 when he came face to face with a 30-foot-long sea serpent resembling a giant condom. The experienced diver had never seen anything quite like the creature, which in his words was just flowing with the tide. At first, Laurie and his friends thought it might be a string-like plankton buildup, which are known to occur in the area. But when one of the divers touched the entity, they noticed it had a cardboard-like texture, unlike the soft texture one would expect with a large group of plankton. As it turns out, the bizarre creature is believed to be a floating colony made up of billions of sea squirts, known as a pyrosome. Apparently, they only come from depths of 2,000 meters, so it's quite rare for them to be up in the shallows like that, Lori told Fox News. It must have been sick or something. A scientist reportedly told the young man he had experienced a once-in-a-lifetime rare thing to see, reminding Lori that he was lucky to have had such a strange yet fascinating encounter. Number 2. German U-Boat versus Sea Monster While surveying an undersea power cable off the Scottish coast in 2016, marine engineers discovered the remains of a World War I German submarine. Experts believe it represented one of two U-boats that British patrol ships sunk in the Irish Sea in 1918. Boy, that was almost a tongue twister. For spending nearly a century on the sea floor, 340 feet below the water surface, the submersible was in surprisingly good shape. Marine archaeologist and historian Ennis McCarty identified it as a UB-3 class submarine. Of the two UB-3 class submarines that allegedly went down in April 1918, one was supposedly attacked by a sea monster prior to its demise. Known as UB-85, it sank on April 30th, and thankfully all its crew members survived. For several years, an internet rumor circulated speculating that the crew of UB-85 claimed that a sea monster attacked their vessel. As the story goes, the monster damaged the submarine and prevented it from going underwater, opening it up to the British patrol ship HMS Coreopsis. But the far-fetched story, which apparently surfaced in 2005, has no known historical or factual backing, according to marine archaeologist and the historian Innes McCartney from before. British naval intelligence interrogated the crew of UB-85, and as far as anyone can tell, nobody ever mentioned having been attacked by a sea monster. In the words of McCartney, who spoke with live science on the matter, this story falls into a longer trend going back at least to the 1930s of these outlandish sea tales being appended to First World War German submarines. What do you think? Could they have been attacked by a sea monster? Let me know in the comments below. Number 1. Shark Lover Attacked A shark attack is undoubtedly a traumatizing experience for most. But one Australian woman named Annika Craney didn't let her encounter with one in July of this year negatively affect her love for the creatures. July was a hot month for shark attacks. The 29-year-old is an experienced diver who was working on a shark documentary off the far Queensland coast on the Great Barrier Reef when one of the predators attacked her seemingly out of nowhere, inflicting blood loss and severe lower leg injuries, including cuts and a possible broken ankle. The alarming incident occurred on Craney's day off during a leisure swim roughly 328 feet from shore. Doctors on Fitzroy Island provided first aid until Queensland Ambulance Service flight paramedics arrived. Craney was flown to Cairns Hospital, where she was filmed saying, I still love sharks! Sharks are beautiful! as she was wheeled into emergency care. 
This is the first I've heard of a shark bite at Fitzroy Island, critical care flight paramedic Terry Cumming told the Brisbane Times. It was just one of three shark attacks that occurred along Australia's east coast over a nine-day span. Craney's optimistic attitude becomes even more impressive upon learning that she lost her home to the bushfires that ravaged parts of Australia earlier this year. Her love of sharks after what she went through and positivity is truly inspiring. Thanks for watching! Have you ever seen a sea monster? What other types of wild animal encounters would you like to learn about? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!